With these questions in hand, you can analyze any situation involving electromagnetic induction. Let's apply Lenz's law and Faraday's law to some numerical examples. Example 73.1. Use Lenz's law to determine the direction of the induced current in the following examples. A. The magnet is perpendicular to the page with the north magnetic pole closest to the coil as the magnet moves vertically downward toward the coil from above. The magnetic north pole passes in front of the coil. Now, this is not easy to see, but I have this bar magnet that is moving down over the face of this coil. The bar magnet is closer to me than the coil is. So imagine I'm holding the bar magnet out away from the plane of the paper. The north pole is pointed toward the loop and now it passes down so that eventually the bar magnet is going to end up down here with its north pole facing towards the loop. So let's ask ourselves our Lenz's Law question. Number one, is the magnetic flux changing? Well, the answer to that question is, in this case, yes it is. The magnetic flux is changing because initially there are no magnetic field lines penetrating penetrating the coil, but finally the magnetic field lines do penetrate the coil. So the next question, is the magnetic flux increasing or decreasing? And in this case the magnetic flux is increasing. So what that tells me is that the direction of the induced magnetic field is going to be opposite the direction of the, the changing magnetic field. Third, which way is the magnetic field that is changing? And because the north pole is pointed toward the coil, what that means is the direction of the magnetic field, the changing magnetic field, is into the page. So that in increasing magnetic field is going to pass into the page. Finally, I need to know that the induced magnetic field is going to be opposite that changing magnetic field. So the induced magnetic field is going to be out of the page. Because the magnetic flux was initially weak, then the sum of the induced magnetic field in one direction with the increasing magnetic field in the opposite direction, those two magnetic fields will tend to cancel each other out. So now finally, apply the right hand rule to figure out which way does the induced current, and let's talk about a conventional current, the induced current flow in order to create a magnetic field that's going to come out of the page. And in this case, it's going to flow in the counterclockwise direction. Part B. The face of the coil and the magnet lie in the plane of the page. The magnet is pushed toward the coil. So let's sketch some magnetic field lines. Now, as this magnet moves toward the coil, if the coil and the magnet lie in the same plane, then I'm not going to have an increasing magnetic field passing through the coil. Essentially, the angle between the magnetic field and the plane of the coil is 90 degrees. Theta is 90 degrees. And so the first question we ask is, is the flux changing? The answer to that question is not in case B, because the angle between the area of the coil and the magnetic field lines is 90 degrees. If the magnetic flux does not change, there's not going to be any induced current. So in case B, there is no induced current in this loop. Number C, the coil lying in the plane of the page is pulled to the right out of a magnetic field that's directed into the page. So this coil is going to be snatched out. Does the magnetic flux change? Yes, it does, because initially there is magnetic field inside the coil. But once the coil is moved to the right, it's going to be removed from that magnetic field. So the next question, is the field increasing or decreasing? In this case, the magnetic field is decreasing as I move the coil out of that magnetic field region. Third, what's the direction of the decreasing magnetic field? The de decreasing magnetic field is into the page. And so what that means is that the induced magnetic field which is going to try to keep the magnet, magnetic field strong, the magnetic flux strong through the loop, is also going to be directed into the page. Finally, in order to induce that magnetic field into the page, when I apply the right hand rule, I see that the induced current has to flow in the clockwise direction as we're looking at it. Number D, a magnetic field is directed out of the page and the coil is in the plane of the page. 
the radius of the coil is increased uniformly. In this case, we have the area of the coil becoming larger, and so it's going to envelop larger and larger magnetic fields. Is the magnetic flux changing? Yes, it is. The magnetic flux is, number two, increasing. So what's happening is the coil wants to resist that change in the magnetic flux. And to do that, it's going to create a magnetic field that's in the opposite direction. So the induced magnetic field is going to be into the page. And applying the right hand rule, the current that produces that magnetic field, that induced current must flow in the clockwise direction in order to produce a magnetic field into the page. Next example. A coil of two loops is initially pierced by 400 Webers of flux, as shown. The flux is reduced to 100 Webers in six seconds. Find the average induced EMF and the direction of the induced current. Let's start with Faraday's law that says the induced EMF is N times the change in the magnetic flux with respect to time. And the negative sign is a statement of Lenz's law. I'm going to disregard the negative sign. I'm going to put numbers in, figure out the EMF, and then use Lenz's law to figure out the direction of the induced current. So N is equal to 2 because I have two loops. The initial flux is 400 Webers. The final flux is 100 Webers. So the change in flux is the final flux minus the initial flux. This all happens in a time interval of six seconds. So I can now put those in to Faraday's law and get me a number. The induced EMF is equal to the number of loops times the change in flux, 100 Webers minus 400 Webers, divided by the change in the time interval, six seconds and now I'll put that into my calculator. I get an EMF of 100 volts. Now technically that's negative, but I'm just interested in the magnitude of the voltage. I'm only interested in the magnitude. I get 100 volts. Let's figure out now what the direction is going to be. Well, what's happening? Is the flux changing? Definitely it is, and we calculated what the EMF is as a result. Is the flux getting bigger or is it getting smaller? In this case, it's getting smaller. So what's the direction of the changing magnetic field? The direction of the changing magnetic field is into the page. And so the direction of the induced magnetic field to try to maintain that flux is going to also be into the page. And now when we apply the right hand rule to figure out the direction of the conventional current, we're going to see that I've got to have a conventional current flowing around the wire in the clockwise direction in order to make a magnetic field that's into the page. Last example. A coil has 200 equally spaced turns of wire wrapped around a square frame, 18 centimeters on a side. A magnetic field is applied perpendicularly to the plane of the coil. If the field changes uniformly from zero to half a Tesla in 0.8 seconds, find the induced EMF in the coil. Faraday's law tells us that the EMF is equal to N delta phi delta T. This delta phi is the change in the field times the area times the cosine of the angle between them. And in this case, it's the magnetic field that's changing. So that's going to be A times the cosine of the angle times the change in the magnetic field. That's going to be what I have to put in for the delta phi. So the EMF in magnitude is N times the area times the cosine of the angle between the area and the magnetic field times the final magnetic field minus the initial magnetic field divided by the time interval. Now because the coil is a square, then I know that the area of the square is the square of the side of one, the length of one side. So I can put these numbers in and figure out the induced EMF. And now you feed those numbers into your calculator. In magnitude, I get that the EMF is 4.05 volts. Technically, what you would find is that there's a negative sign in there. Again, the negative sign would tell you something about the direction of the induced current. But in this case, we're not given 
anything about directions of magnetic fields and directions of induced currents. And so I'm just going to put the magnitude of this number there. So what we've done is we have in this lesson seen that changing magnetic fields cause induced EMFs, induced electric fields that produce induced currents. Those currents are going to run in such a way to try to maintain the magnetic flux the way it was before the changing magnetic field began. That's a statement of the law of inertia. We call it Lenz's law in electromagnetism. For now, that's it.